So we're doing six, huh? Yeah, I think hmm. we're gonna do all the six today. It's a long that's, one. That's a long one. I didn't there's, even. There was one point I was gonna make about five, just because I was listening to five and then in the six, you know, on audio, and uh, <clears throat> I was thinking. I've been thinking about the Sabbath lately, and and why. I, there, it's just kind of a question in my mind is because I was re I started reading Exodus or at least parts of Exodus and where Moses talks about the institution of the Sabbath right and um, why why did Jesus change the Sabbath is, a, is kind of a question and I think uh, where does it say he did well it's kind of like he said my my father's working so and, and I am working so it's kind of in a sense he didn't really change it, but it's like um, it's okay to, to work on the Sabbath because the Father is working on the Sabbath. So it's well, anyway. I just wondered why. Well, I think why, he, I, he, that may be true, but I I think he was just setting them straight as to how it was all along. And that's why I'm wondering if Jesus was changed anything. If we had the wrong. Uh, the wrong interpretation of, I mean, it, from the Old Testament, the Pharisees had the wrong idea of what yeah, the they, Sabbath should have been. They took it to a legalistic point. Right. Yeah, yeah they kind of perverted what the Sabbath was supposed to be about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, you know, thinking like when uh, Moses was talking about the Sabbath and he was saying, you know, he's saying, if any, you know, he's talking about the law, if, if anyone does any work on the Sabbath, that uh, they would be put to death. But yet, the if you look that word up, it's kind of more addressing um, if you kind of if you go to work in a sense. Mm -hmm. It's like it's not necessarily doing any quote work, but it's more like you know sustainable work that you do to to yeah. provide for yourself. Yeah, and so doing a job or something. Doing a job, basically. Yeah. That's what the Sabbath was for. Was for was to, rest from yeah, that. And from if that. you think about it, if you don't. If you're not resting at least one day a week, you're working yourself to death. And, you know, so yeah. the, the, there was kind of the message there. And, and it's not like God struck them dead if they, if they weren't honoring the Sabbath. It was like for many, you know, many, many, many times that they weren't honoring the Sabbath, then there was judgment that came on Israel. And they said, because you have not, one of the things was mm -hmm. because you hadn't been honoring the Sabbath. And, uh, and I think God was instituting that. I think he wanted to send a strong message to institute the Sabbath for our own good. You know, but anyway, I was that part of that was, is that because I'm, I'm thinking that Jesus walks back past this man and, you know, the man that he healed on the Sabbath. And it just struck me that, wait a minute, you know, this guy wasn't at home. He was there and he was crippled. So either somebody did some work to get him there or he had to work himself to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, according you to the Pharisaical, slept there. or he was yeah. laid there, you know, maybe at sunrise, because I guess the day starts at, you know, before sunrise. And so that's the official Sabbath yeah. until Six sunset, yeah. you know, so maybe he was there or he was there overnight or something. But I was, it, that got me thinking about it. And yeah. <laughs> it, has to be, it has to be your normal work. Because you say, you know, you say you do no work on the Sabbath whatsoever. Okay, you have a toddler. The toddler's just outside the house. You're running down towards your creek. Well, I can't go get my toddler because it's Sabbath. So if you drown, well, well you drown because I can't do any work. Like, no, you go and get your toddler. I mean, if you have to in common sense, God's like, no, there's certain things you have to do. Uh, but as far as your everyday work, then yeah, that yet yeah, rest from your labor. Yeah, well, Jesus said that. Is that what you were saying? Because if he, he said that if one of your sheep or yeah. goes get well, yeah, you're gonna go find it. You're gonna yeah. go get it. Yeah. yeah. Or if it, one of your animals falls into a pit or something, you're gonna go, you know, get your neighbor, and you're gonna have to take a few guys with you and go fish them out, you know. Yeah. And, Cause think about it, the, the and back then said that if your animal gorges someone, then either the animal had to be killed and you owe this person so much after that, and so then yeah, go get your animal before it causes some damage. So yeah, so I think you're right in the fact that um, from your physical labor as far as your job. So then yeah, rest from that if you're labor from your working, but as far as every everyday things you couldn't do. But they were getting nitpicky too. I mean Jesus wasn't exerting himself 
to just tell the guy to get up and walk. I yeah. mean, they're calling that work, you know. Yeah. So they're just mm -hmm. being they're just being nitpicky yeah. about it. Yeah, like you know, I don't know if you said it or Daryl said. It. Someone said like, oh, "Do you want to walk out? Go get up, take your bed, go. All right, and he's going about his business." <laughs> but like you say, if you want to walk, then take thy bed mm -hmm. and get up <laughs> this face and go thou forth and be healed. Yeah. It's like, Dude, yeah. yeah. If you're laying there, get up. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, man. Anything else on five we need to cover? Six is going to be a long one. Let me get started on I'll, uh, I'll read the whole thing, and then we can pick it apart. <laughs> or should I, do you want me to read in sections, and we can go go by it as we so go? Yeah, it's pretty long. Yeah, because that would mean I'm just rushing myself through yeah. it. Read it all you said? I wouldn't read all of it. I think okay. Yeah. I'm going gonna, gonna to read it how it's broken up. You know how it's got the little headings above it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to read so. read those sections. And then we'll, then we can go for it. And then if we don't get through it all, we can pick up. Now, remember, we're not meeting next week. Oh, right. that's yeah. right. That's right. Okay. Okay. Chapter 6. After this... Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread should not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, disciples Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving them that they, perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Okay. Comments. Something that struck me as you're reading was, uh, you know, of course, this is, you know, the, the big story, but um, that it, he didn't stop with just enough like Philip was saying it wouldn't be enough for us to buy even a, just a little for everyone to have a little bit it'd be very expensive Jesus was when he was distributing it he allowed the people to have as much as they wanted yeah mm -hmm. they made a point of saying that yeah yeah which is kind of like when we were asking the Lord for something you know we we tend to ask for just enough and his intention is to give us as George, much as we want. Our cup runs over. Right? Yeah. One thing to note is that chapter 5, at the very beginning, it says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And now he went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And I checked it on a map. That's like 60 miles that's how far that's how far they traveled from chapter five to chapter six <laughs> on foot <laughs> and a crowd behind yeah. them, a huge crowd large crowd mm -hmm. 
One thing stuck out to me was um, when it said, uh, it says here, when the people saw the signs that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world because their, their flesh is being satisfied. And the sad thing about that is that what happened when you get hungry? Is he now not the, <laughs> the person you were expecting because now you're hungry again? You can't do it. It's just sad that um, because, and I think he says later on that you believe this because I fed you. Well, and not only that, but the crowd, they followed them, and they didn't take anything with them. You, you know, think, it made you think, we're going to go out and we're going to listen to this guy for a while. Let's at least take something to hold us over. You think they, most moms are packing a salmon somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <Sack of lunch. laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, there's going to be some 11 breaths somewhere to keep the kid quiet. Well, one kid out of the whole large crowd, yeah, had he had good. something. Yeah. And what, what did, did he have, he had fish and loaves, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, see, that kid came prepared. <laughs> yes, he did. Okay. Yeah, he had five barley loaves and two fishes, yeah. And when Philip answered him, 200... Denarii or denarii, however you pronounce mm -hmm. it, worth of bread would not be enough. Well, 200, 200 denar, denarii was a week's, uh, one denarii was a week's wages. So they figured 200 weeks wages wasn't enough to satisfy the size of the crowd that was following Jesus. And if we notice, it says that there were 5,000, the men sat down 5,000 in number. And it doesn't mention women and children, but we know they were following too. So, I mean, it could have been up to like 15,000 people. Yeah, because normally yeah. women outnumber men when it comes and to... And kids. Them. Yeah, and kids. Yeah. Anyway, did they show this stuff in baskets? Because, and, and how small were the pieces? Because I figured we have large pieces. If the basket is big, you're going to see, hey, this stuff multiplying and looking at it. You have to physically see it. It's a smaller basket. There's a bunch of pieces in there. I mean, this is my mind where it's like, what does well, it look like? Well, some people must have been carrying empty baskets if they didn't have enough. Yeah, right. like, like, why would you carry empty basket? Yeah. <laughs> so just, because they had 12 baskets. Yeah. Unless exactly. Jesus made those, too. <laughs> yeah, he multiplied the baskets. <laughs> and you notice they didn't save the fish. They saved the, the bread. Yeah, was, I think fish would probably yeah, it was go bad. Yeah, was bad. Yeah, I wonder how long this took to distribute. I mean, you're talking five thousand people. Yeah, and it said yeah. it said Jesus then took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to those who were seated. Jesus That's did. It. Yeah. So he's walking along with, with probably an empty basket, and every time he reached in, pulls out. Loaf of bread, and now it's empty again. He goes to the next person, pulls, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I don't know if the whole thing was full the whole, every time, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I, exactly. Or filled up as he went along. But here's the thing I find um, really, um, I must say, impressive, but noteworthy for me is that he distributes the bread and he's the bread of life. How symbolic mm -hmm. that is that he has distributed the bread, not the fish, but the bread. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get that. Where is this? Where, where are we at? I said uh, he took the loaves when he gave and distributed them, and so also the fish as much as they wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and later it's he talks about how he's the bread that came down from heaven, and you know. Yeah, yeah we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Old Testament, you no, know, the manna from heaven. So. We're going to get into that too, yeah. <laughs> um, and I like where at the very beginning of, what is it, verse 6? 4, 5, 6, where he said, where he asked, where are we to buy bread? Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? And he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. I, th I thought that was kind of interesting, where Jesus is like, okay, I know what I'm going to do. Let's see what these guys, where where, let me see where they're at. Yeah, my question, 
he was testing him for what? I mean, what did they expect him to have an idea of, or to maybe just a little fun to hey, you guys gonna pass the plate around and we'll get some food, or to see if they've really caught on to who he is, you yeah, know, and yeah. that you know, I mean, it's like <laughs> well, let's see if these guys have been listening. Yeah, Could I be. don't know. It doesn't say. It just says yeah. that he was said this to test him. Yeah, just some of my footnotes here. It just says Jesus was testing Philip to strengthen his faith mm. by asking for a human solution, knowing there was none. Jesus highlighted the powerful and, mir and miraculous act that he was about to perform. Mm. That's good. That's just as well. And then Andrew, you know, brings the brings the child to him. And so, is Andrew demonstrating faith here by doing that? Oh, you mean yeah. like, here's somebody with something, can you take what we got and go from there? Yeah. 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 And look at the fact that you fed them and, and filled their stomach, they, to force them, they were going to force them to be their king. It's like, Few miracles and you got fed and you're just ready to just. There's more that he wants. To, there's a deeper meaning to his being there that they obviously didn't get. He was just starting out, but how quickly people can be um, persuaded when their flesh is satisfied. Right. Well, gee, I think Jesus says that in the next part, where he is not so much the sign is that they were fed. I think we'll come to that. I'm pretty sure it's coming up. The uh, but John says that when the people saw the sign, so he, John saw this as, as a sign that Jesus did. A sign is something that's used to convey information or instructions. So he saw what Jesus, the miracle, not just saw it as a miracle, but as a sign. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and Jesus was using this as a spirit as a specific message right because he's message. gonna get into he's the he's the bread of life and he ain't gonna get into some pretty hard to swallow stuff no pun intended there's something that just keeps standing out to me too is that he said gather up the leftover fragments so that nothing will be lost that's got to be part of the message you know mm. that um i don't know if he's making an analogy to lost people you know that gather the, gather them all up so that nothing will be lost. He keeps saying throughout the gospel that he's, that, uh, that he never lost anything that the Father gave him. Right. You know, he's going to say that here too. Yeah, and the disciples that you know the people that the Lord gave him that he never lost any of them. So it just it seemed weird that you know not to gather them all up to make it you know to clean up. You know, necessarily. But he said, right. gather them all up this so that nothing will be lost. Yeah, it wasn't like, okay, let's pick up the mess. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's not like Jesus was trying to be ultra efficient either. I think it, it, it just sounds to me like that's part of the message. You know, that he's saying. He's, he's making a point. I would have to agree with you on that. Because it is a sign, I mean, right before, right after that, so they gathered them up, he told them to gather them up, it says the people saw the sign he had done and said, this is the indeed prophet who is to come into the world. So at this point, they at least recognized, they, I, I think they, they, they recognized it, at least. Mm -hmm. At least incidentally, that he is because they said he's a prophet who who has come into the world, and then they turn around and tried to make him a king, which they wanted to do to uh, the Messiah. You know, when he came, Jesus with withdrew again to the mountain by himself. He didn't take his disciples. He he went away. He got out of there. I mean, and this—I mean, I'm not saying this is the scripture is saying, but can the thought um, 
It says, um, so they gathered them up and filled the 12 baths with fragments. And so you know, we know um, before Pentecost, the disciples were fragmented. They were just all separate. And, but God came with the Holy Spirit and filled them. Good point. I mean, I mean, not meaning that, but I've been seeing that reference from Scripture, how that can be a type and shadow of. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that kind of stuff is spread out through the, all the Scriptures. Yeah. Where those, you know, you foresee something and, or you see something that you remember it was done back here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, the next little section, and then we'll take a little short little break so I can refill with my water. <laughs> um, and unless there's more. Anybody else? Yeah. Any more comments, sir? Um, just the, one other thing that just keeps coming to mind about the, the gathering up the fragments so that none will be lost. Something that Jesus also kept saying was that, uh, that he would take charge of everyone that the Father had given him and that he would, he would also raise them up in the last day. You're getting so, ahead of us, uh, right? <laughs> but, but I'm thinking of I'm thinking of that none will be lost, in the sense that in the, the the gathering of the fragments that you know could this be a a foretelling of the, how the church would be fragmented throughout history, but at the end in the re, in the resurrection, nothing will be lost. Yeah, the church will be gathered together and you know taken up in the at the end of the age. You know the angels are going to gather yeah. from the four corners of That's the right. earth. So yeah. I mean, that could be a good analogy right there. Okay, when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea and got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. Capernaum, however you want to pronounce it. Tomato, tomato type thing. <laughs> it was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat. And they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I do not be afraid when they were glad then they were glad to take him into the boat and immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going what, what got me in this little part is like why did they get into the boat and jesus wasn't even with them you know <laughs> why what, what were they thinking yeah he didn't give any instructions to hey go Go over here in the boat. He, he was he, off by he was himself. He the mountain doing his own thing. You know, yeah. All the community with God. And the, the Sea of Galilee is pretty decent size. I mean, they were going across it to, they were going to Capernaum, right? Right. That was the idea. And so, okay, yeah. if they knew that Jesus hadn't gone ahead of them, or maybe they thought he did, um, you know, you're right. They're like leaving him behind. Yeah. You know, it's like maybe... Well, I don't know what, what the plan was. <laughs> like, or, they, or, was it, or they thought he already gone over there. Like, oh, well, we're, he left without us. And they're in the boat. And, but Jesus come walking. He's on the water. He's kind of just doing his thing. And like, hey, what's up, guys? And I'm like, we're like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but in verse 18 there where it says, um, the weather started getting rough. That was your thing, it wasn't it? 11, 12 passengers to sell that day. <laughs> but they got, they got what was coming to them for, for, not, for leaving without Jesus. Yeah. And, then, and then check it out. They were three or four miles out, okay. and Jesus comes walking up to them. So he walked on that ocean or that sea. For three or four miles. Yeah, I didn't even think about that, how long he had to walk. That's a distance. Yeah. And on yeah. the water the whole yeah. time. Yeah. I don't think he swam almost uh, all the way and then started, then got up and started walking on the water. I think he was, who knows, he could have been running on the water before that. Yeah. So it says, it says um, the sea became rough because of a strong wind. The tiny ship was tossed. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> for the, for the finished crew. <laughs> but, you know, he's walking in this storm. 
I mean, yeah. the sea's getting rough. He's just kind of walking and stuff. And yeah, I didn't see. I didn't think about that either. He's walking not only on the water, but he's walking when there's a storm going on. Yeah. The, or the the wind was blowing at mm -hmm. least. Um, some I heard somewhere somebody was preaching on this section. That they they said that the the storms on the Sea of Galilee can get very violent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah For just, such a small yeah. ocean, you know, yeah. sea that and it can be. Too. Yeah. I wonder if this is. I mean, I didn't check this out to see by paralleling if this was a time where John omitted. Remember when Peter said, let me walk out to you? I wonder if that happened here. And John's just not telling that part of the yeah, story. Maybe. You know, maybe. he just didn't didn't fill in that part of it. But it says he was walking on the sea, coming near the boat, and they were frightened. I, I just could imagine him like, okay, you guys, you guys left without me. I'll meet you on the other side, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Jesus. <laughs> Who knows? But the thing that as soon as you got in the boat, they were immediately to the land they were going to. So how far? I wonder how far out they were. We we're going to Catalina Island. And we we're only two miles from the shore, and builds up the boat. And now we're Catalina Island. You know, some people <laughs> say that the boat was translated like like Philip. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the case, because if that is the case, they because they use that word immediately. He was on mm -hmm. the other side. And if, if that's the case, then you're going to have to take that word immediately and apply the same thing everywhere that is mentioned. Yeah. And two things I can think of is the Spirit, when Jesus was baptized, and the Spirit immediately drove him to the desert, that would have to mean that Jesus came up from being baptized and was translated to the desert. Immediately he was there. If they're mm -hmm. using the same uh, uh, meaning behind immediately as is, is used here. Another time, immediately a man appears in a synagogue in Mark 1.23. So was the man translated into the synagogue? And another time, Jesus' disciples immediately leave the boat in Matthew 14.22. So did they get translated from the boat to somewhere? I don't think so. That's why... It, it doesn't have to be a hard, fast rule, though. Because the, even though... The word immediately was used, whatever the Greek word was for that, doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be the same connotation every time that it is used. It, it could mean that that's, it could be what the author was trying to portray, that there was a translation that took place, and this is how he described it. Yeah, and I didn't take the time to write it down, but if you take the parallels of all the Gospels, it, to me, it doesn't say that he was translated there. It was, it was not, they were immediately on the other side. It just mm -hmm. meant that quickly they were on the other side. See, it you, you'd have, to, you'd have to line up all the four Gospels and see what they're saying about the same incident. Yeah, mm -hmm. one, one of the meanings for the word immediately, in biblical reference, it says, um, with speed or urgency. So it doesn't mean that, no, That's what I think it right is. Right away, they Got to pay fast. It's right, depends on the good day. wave. Yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's like it could be saying, and immediately they started toward the other side and arrived at Capernaum. You know, yeah, that could it yeah. could mean that, but you know, was depending on the structure, it, it'd have to be. I'd have to really look at it in the Greek, and maybe even the Greek wouldn't tell you. You know, I don't think the so, Greek will tell you. Uh, you could either take it as this single instance and translate it in that way, or you can line up the other three Gospels and see how they're talking about it, and they don't say it the same way it does here. That's that's my point. That's just what I believe. I mean, if somebody wants to believe that the that the whole boat and all everybody in it was was translated from one spot to another, or that's fine. That's just another miracle, you know what I mean? But I yeah. just don't see that is what happened. Well, sometimes when something is transliterated or whatever from Greek into English, sometimes English has a little trouble, yeah. you know, bringing out the, the right connotation, you know, to us and what it means to us today. Because, you know, like to say, and immediately the boat was, at the land so immediately was it's kind of like it's like it, it sounds like it's being it was in one place and then it was in another but you know 
that could just be a structural problem of translating in English, maybe. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just bringing that up because, I mean, I've heard it said, and I just don't see how that's it, and that's just my point. You're going you're gonna to have, if you, that's, if you want to believe the other way, that's, I'm okay with that. Yeah, the Greek word for the, is uh, yophios, and it means to, that it is at once or soon, or as soon as forthwith, immediately, short, or straight away. So if the sea was kind of rough, then maybe the sea calmed down, they'd be able to actually row and get their, I mean, you know, who knows, but yeah, yeah I, I don't think it was, you no know, immediately they were trans, translated there that fast, like we're in the middle of the ocean, next, you know, we're in Hawaii. <laughs> you know, right. like that stuff. Yeah, I don't think it happened that way. Yeah, but I just want to make it known if that's what you want to believe. I'm I'm cool with it. I just don't happen to believe that, and I don't think it's wrong to believe that. Well, look what it says in Matthew uh, fourteen twenty five starts. It was about three o'clock in the morning, and Jesus came to them walking on the water. And the disciples saw him. They screamed in terror, thinking he was a ghost. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, does it, what does it go on to say? Does it talk uh, about reaching the other side? But Jesus side? spoke to them at once. It's all right, he said. I'm here. Don't be afraid. And Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you by walking on water. All right, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over to the side of the boat and walked on water toward Jesus. But when he when he looked around at the high waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Well, can you keep going a little yeah, further? Yeah, let's see where is that. Okay. Instantly, Jesus reached out his hands and grabbed him. You, you don't have much faith, Jesus said. Why don't you, why do you doubt me? And then, and when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God. They they explained excitedly. A little further, and then just as Jesus Jesus heard all of them touch him, says after they had crossed the lake, the land of what is it again? Jin, 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 so again, the news of their arrival spread quickly throughout the whole surrounding area. But it didn't say how quickly they got over there. Yeah, see that if that's the same incident, you yeah. know, we don't know yeah. that this is the same. I don't yeah. know. We'd have to line yeah. it up. I mean, that could be the same thing. Yeah. The same John event is or here. was it a different event? Yeah. But I didn't realize it was three o'clock in the morning. You know. <laughs> Why are you crossing at three o'clock in the morning? Yeah, yeah. He's out there walking on the water at night, and yeah. so if there's a storm yeah. going on, maybe there's lightning happening, and so they're seeing these flashes yeah. and seeing this man, yeah. you know, form on the water. <laughs> Can well, it says that. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and started to cross the sea. And uh, it was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. So, I mean, this could be the same incident that we're reading here. So how, how confident were they to actually go out there and brave well, this at night? Well, some There's no light out there. So I'm sure they're, they're yeah. in the sea, but still, though. I'm like, well, what did it say that they screamed in terror? <laughs> <laughs> they screamed in terror, yeah. I thought it was a ghost. Yeah. We're, we're in there 20 years. Oh. Uh. Yeah, they screamed in terror thinking he was a ghost, yeah. yeah I'm just looking down there. They put notes about that. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. If I'm out in the ocean, it they talk in the morning and someone's walking the water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd yeah. be screaming too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. My man car is definitely out the window. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Short little break here. Okay. okay the next one is quite a few verses here. Starting uh, 22. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had only been one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat. Did I read this already? Did no. No, yeah. okay. No. Okay, on the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near to the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, 
nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are not seeking me because you saw signs, because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to him, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. Whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son believes in him, and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father or mother we know? How does he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the, in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for life of the world is my flesh. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to him, Truly to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks of my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the Father has sent me, as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Caper Capernaum. I'll stop there. That's a mouthful right there. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. Insights. He's often obviously following the bread theme from feeding the people. You know, it's kind of like 
John is tying the story together. Kind of like the woman yeah. at the well, the living water thing. Yeah. yeah. You know. Now here in, in, in verse 14, when the people saw the signs he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Then on 42, is this not the son of Joseph who we know? <laughs> it's like, so first you say he is, then you turn yeah. on, because then you turn on and say, well, is he? You know who this guy is. How quickly they change. <laughs> yeah, in verse 30, they say, so they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you and work do you perform? Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness as it is written. And yet they had just eaten. They just, yeah, meat. they just had the sign of miraculous bread. <laughs> Our fathers had miraculous bread. What sign you show us? Do you I, mean the other day when I just fed you guys? Yeah. All that bread? I, think, I think some of those fish that they ate were flopping. It might have been. <laughs> But how quickly um, they change when, um, they, is that quickly they change? Yeah. And when, he, when he started declaring who he was. Jesus then, said, because you saw signs, not because you saw signs. So it, Jesus, not just John, is saying that what was being done is a sign. Yeah. Because he's, he's, he's admitting it himself. So as long as he stayed in their box, you no, know, you're just a human being, you're just a prophet, we'll believe you. But when you start claiming to be who you really are, and it doesn't agree with our theology or our religious mindset, then no, you're not that person. Show us more signs. Yeah, I mean, just to reiterate what you said, when they saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is coming to the world. And now they're coming over here saying, okay, what sign do you have? Yeah, I mean, they just live, like I said earlier, they just literally saw the sign that they're asking for. Oh, well, like, it was the next day. So. It was the next day, well, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> like, yeah, they had a whole two for hour to, to yeah. remember. Did we really have that bread? Yeah, you did. It's like when the uh, Pharisees said, no, we have never been in bondage. Like, dude, you're in bondage there under Rome. We're yeah. talking about you. <laughs> like, yeah, really? yeah. Nobody's been set free yet. You're still in bondage. <laughs> yeah. Man. And it makes me wonder if they were maybe expecting a Moses-like figure in their, you know, they had their own idea of what they thought Jesus would be. And so they were demanding this other sign that it would be actual manna from heaven mm -hmm. to go along with their idea that this is a Moses-like figure coming to deliver them. That could be. And to raise them up as a mighty nation again or something. That might be why Jesus made the point. Yeah. You know, with Mo Moses isn't even the one that gave you that bread, first of all. <laughs> and the people that ate it, they died. But this bread, you're going to live forever. Yeah, like you said, maybe the first time like Moses did, Moses did part of the Red Sea and the water from the rocks and all these things and they're looking for that and said all the things that you're looking for that Moses was talking about it's all accumulated inside who I am so you're missing what the you're sign. asking for the is sign. Right there. yeah you're missing yeah, the, you sign, the sign dude. it's right here I'm the sign yeah you just ran the red light because that means you <laughs> missed the sign <laughs> right and then, then was Jesus saying I'm not speaking about Moses Moses was speaking about me yeah yeah exactly. Exactly. Let's see here. And, uh, and kind of just like they said, sir, give us this bread always. And that's what the women at the will said, you know, give me that water so I don't have to mm -hmm. be thirsty again. And they're saying the same thing with the food now. I like, though, that line Jesus says, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. That's comforting to know because because yeah. if if we're if we are Christians and we are believers in the Lord, that means that the Father gave us to Jesus, mm -hmm. and Jesus says, once we're His, He's never one. He's never going to cast out, and nobody's going to pluck them out of their hand. Yes, and He will keep them. Yeah, and He says, "In the one who comes to me." I don't know why he's cast out. And 
you know, he, he even said to the Pharisees, he said, if you would have come to me <laughs> and I would have given you life, mm -hmm. you know, eternal life. He said, if you, have, if you would have come to me. And he does say, though, down in verse 44, that no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, if I'm not mistaken, the word draw there is a word of violence. It's like dragging, taking somebody out of the fire. You know what I mean? That kind of draw. Mm. Uh, let's see. And he says he'll lose nothing that the Father has given him. For this is the will of my Father that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I don't think that that, by my research, the word look doesn't, isn't, isn't in reference to actually seeing Jesus. So it pertains only to the people of that time who saw him. Mm -hmm. Because the word look can be translated to view mentally or to consider. So in that verse could easily apply to us today, not even seeing Jesus and not just whoever was there that saw him at that time. You know what I'm saying by the word looks on me? Like it could have been applied to only those people that he was talking to. I think it's in, from those people on. Yeah, I would agree with that. Because you think no, the thing about looking, it's not like you said, it's not just about I saw you, but you no, know, looking, perceiving, scaled and taking off your eyes to so you understand who Christ is, all that stuff with, with the, that comes into your view. So it could be physically in your view, it could be spiritually in your view, you get that revelation. And so those who come, those who will look upon him. Well, we could say the same thing. I could, if I was preaching in front of a, a group of people and I said, you need to look unto Jesus for the, your salvation. I, obviously, I'm not saying you need to see him physically. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's what that word is talking yes. about here. It could be like a, a, a sort of, you know, to consider. You know, to, yeah. Consider is yeah. one of the meanings. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you right, because no, most people nowadays aren't going to physically see Jesus. Right. So you got, so you look and believe in him. So how do you look and believe? No. That's, yeah, exactly yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. And then in verse 42, 1, the Jews grumbled about him because he said, because one, Jesus, in verse 59, we we'll over here the last thing we said that just the last se sentence we read of this section it says Jesus said these things in the synagogue so the Jews grumb when it says the Jews grumbled about him I think that the, they weren't talking about the Jewish people as much as they were referring to like the Pharisees or the Jewish Jewish leaders it wasn't the whole it wasn't the whole Jewish people when they usually when you read about say the same the Jews mm -hmm. they're talking about those people Sadducees Pharisees yeah. the mm -hmm. leaders well and maybe you know there was a big crowd that came on the boats over the you know but these could have been the Jews that were at the synagogue at Capernaum right that hadn't really witnessed all of this and all these people coming in and here he is kind of this popular guy saying mm -hmm. that he's the bread <laughs> right <laughs> they yeah. could be like eh. and like what are they talking about yeah they missing it all together yeah. there yeah he's making grand claims and they're you know they're just taking these people's word for it you know, and, and jesus is making these grand claims about being the bread that came down from heaven and yeah i could see where they would be uh Then others were saying that is is not this Jesus the son of Joseph whose father and mother we know. Uh, so they were at least where familiar it, where, with him. Where's that at? Uh, Forty-two. Forty-two. So at least they were familiar with him, you know, as a as a 
person in there in the area. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even think about that. But it must have been. I still think it was the the leaders that were saying that. But yeah, they must. That's a long ways away from Jerusalem. And, and even further, I think, even further away from Nazareth. So Jesus must have been, the word of about him, well, they knew who his mother was, the son so, of Joseph, and they knew his father so was. So as a carpenter, did he travel with his dad in different places? And yeah. Work? Could yeah. that. Yeah. 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 He been known in the region. Yeah, can we think that, no, we think in his ministry and he didn't around, but even as a child and a young carpenter, he really got around with his dad. Yeah, good point. Because that's what I was just reading. They said they saw him only as a carpenter from Nazareth. That's just what they were. That's what I was just reading. Here. Oh, is that is that actually yeah. worded here? No, no, Did it's in one of my footnotes. Oh, okay. The religious leaders grumbled because they could not accept Jesus claimed of divinity. They they saw him only as a carpenter from Nazareth. They refused to believe that Jesus was God's divine son, and they could not tolerate his message. Well, if they knew who who his dad was, yeah. or his stepdad, uh, son of Joseph, because the sons usually did what the fathers did. Right. You know, they passed yeah. it down. Yeah. So they knew that his father yeah. was probably a carpenter and assumed Jesus was one too. Unless he, I just outright knew he was one. And didn't they always despise, I don't think they, they despised Nazarene, but didn't the Bible say... Can anything good think from Nazareth? Mm -hmm. yeah. said. So obviously it's like one of those, oh, Samaria, Nazareth, no, yeah. nothing good can come from that place. So how could he possibly, anything mm -hmm. of value come from there? Now, however, jumping on to the first verse of the next section where he says, when many of the disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying, who can listen to it? Obviously making reference to Jesus' words where he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. <laughs> I mean, if I was there, I would have, I probably would have been with that group that left. <laughs> yeah. Hearing that, and, and, and I mean, unless Jesus gave me the understanding at that time, there was some that still stuck with them, though. Yeah, because, you no, know, in 41, it says that the Jews are grumbling, and here it is, the disciples are grumbling about what he had to say. Yeah. So a lot of stuff, I mean, you got to figure, a lot of stuff that was hard to understand. Yeah. It's like he came with something that was, spiritually true but they never connected it so well something way out the box for them that's what verse 63 says in the next section it says the words i have spoken to you are spirit and life yeah. so i mean he meant it's just like when he said tear down this temple and i'll rebuild it he yeah. was talking about his body and they didn't understand it as that and I'm just saying, if I would have heard Jesus say that, I, it would have been a flag going up for me. Mm -hmm. Especially the way he said it. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Especially, no especially when, the, the, when the, in the Old Testament, you don't do anything with the blood whatsoever. That's I right. Say. Yeah, you don't drink so like, the how blood. How do you sit there and say this when we've been taught and God said not to? And you're saying God says... You're okay? He's like, no, dude. Uh, you need to go somewhere. Well, that might have been enough then for the disciples to at least think, well, we know if, if he's from God, he's not saying what, we, what we're what we hearing him say. Yeah. It's something deeper. You know, he's he was making the analogy that it, that he is the bread come down from heaven. All the, you know, throughout this whole, and, and, and all and kind of demonstrating that when he was feeding the 5,000. And so you'd think that they would at least kind of play along with the analogy a little bit that obviously he's not talking about real flesh and real blood, but he's making a point. But, you know, in their mind, they wouldn't, you know, they're thinking that he's the one, he's the Messiah, but why, but they're in their mind, the Messiah wasn't going to be a suffering 
person that was going to give his life. Well, they, so, they should have thought, there's still, still probably a large crowd here. And even if they ate his body and drank his blood, there wouldn't be enough to go around for everybody. So only the only the first few who got to him, only the few, did, few they, cannibals. But maybe they know. made maybe they multiply Jesus. Like yeah, that. right. <laughs> but, like, they they were you know they weren't expecting their Messiah to be uh, the suffering servant, you know, Messiah. They they were. They you know, maybe they're looking for something else, a like conquering king, a or something. King, yeah. And it's, so something that this free them from the didn't make sense to them. It wasn't you know they weren't they weren't putting the pieces together. They weren't getting it. Yeah, they definitely were not getting it <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and it, but you're right, Robert. They're, they're expecting someone to come in as a king and to deliver them from Rome and to establish who they were. And it's like, if this man really is the son of God, why would he be talking like this? Mm -hmm. You know, the, I, you know, this, other than, I mean, some people I would imagine just say, oh, this guy's nuts, you know, and just walk out. But on the other hand, they would say, and even if he's doing this grand analogy, this doesn't make sense to me, you yeah. know. But you think about all the stories they heard of God before then, all the great things he did, you know, that was some amazing stuff. And here's now Jesus coming, saying this stuff, like, wait a minute. You're God, but we've heard God doing these things. Mm -hmm. You're talking about something totally opposite. Yeah. Now, if he said he was going to die on a Roman cross, they probably would still would have said, what? <laughs> That's for criminals. That's for, you know, and then they, they see these crosses as they come in and out of cities where oh, the yeah. Romans have them strung up. And yeah. they're like, what are you talking about? If you're from God, why would you die like that? <laughs> right. Yeah, well, they were, were mocked when they mocked him. I'm saying, if you are God, come down from the cross, you know. But some did believe because it says here, but in 64, but there are some of you who do not believe, which means there must be some who did, who heard yeah. what he said and took the heart, like, you know what? This is right. Because they probably spiritually discern. I, I mean, I understand it mentally, but spiritually, this connects. That's some pretty strong words there, though. Yeah, it is. I mean, yeah. eat my flesh and now some sauce and tortillas, but not eating your flesh. <laughs> you know, it's like talking to like somebody who has nothing, no idea about the gospel, and the and to present it in such a way as like you need to be washed in the blood of the lamb, and they're like, "Wait a second, <laughs> <second. laughs> like, right. what's going on in the back room?" Yeah, exactly. Faith <laughs> <Same> worshippers. <laughs> we, we, we look at this from the, the this point of view, you know, seeing having having known True. Jesus did on the cross, and yeah. you know, and everything. And it, I would imagine this probably didn't even make sense until the Last Supper. You know, when Jesus, was, you know, told his disciples what was going to happen, and 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 he says, yes. "This is my flesh broken for you." This is, you know, and he starts passing the bread around, passing the wine, and this, then it starts to make sense. But, but even then, yeah. they didn't fully believe or no. fully understand it. Yeah, yeah, but it, but you're right. At least Jesus is a, is is opening up the understanding a little more at that point. Yeah. He's giving them a reason yeah, this to, is just behind the blood. <laughs> yeah, he's throwing it out there. He's, get, he's getting the wheels going, you know, <laughs> spinning. And... Yeah, oh, like that breaks down for us. They simplify this for us. Does this make any sense at all? <laughs> yeah. Too much to handle it at this point, right? Yeah, it's like, I don't want to leave you guys with that last thought in your head. This is This is what I'm talking about. Okay, last little section here. Um, when many of the disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can listen to this? But Jesus, knowing him in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life, and flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but these are some. But there are some of you who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe, and who it was who would betray him. And he said, "This is why 
I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, and yet one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, uh, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. And I found it interesting right there where it said that many of his disciples turned away. I mean, so he had more disciples than the 12. Yeah. Mm. But these weren't the followers. They're not talking about the group that was following. They're talking about whoever his group of disciples he had. Mm -hmm. They turned away. So it's not some people that walked with them uh, split. Yeah, I, I, they couldn't hang. They couldn't hang in there. And so I wonder, but the other disciples took off. Were those some of John's disciples? Because Jesus says, "No, you twelve, I chose. I chose you twelve. Mm -hmm. But are the other ones that came from John? Well, it says many of his disciples. So I, I think that I think that he had like a a big group. Then he had the twelve. And then he had. Peter, James, and John, the, you know, the inner circle, yeah. the ones who went up on the Mount, mm -hmm. Transfiguration, and so forth. And then, if you want to take it even further, the one who John says, the disciple yeah. that Jesus loved. Yes, <laughs> which you said often. It's like the, I'm not know, saying it's me, but the one that he loved. It's like Moses <laughs> writing about himself saying he was the humblest yes. man, you know. <laughs> right. It's that type of thing, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go back when it says earlier, he says, no, he knew who believed and those who didn't believe. So obviously the ones who took off were the ones who didn't believe. Right. And what a thing to throw out to him. He says, after Peter comes right back and says, you, you have the words of eternal life and, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And Jesus says, didn't I choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. After a statement like that, and Jesus throw out there, you know. <laughs> he let he it be known right away when he thought. Like, I'm not trying to... He don't hold I'm back in. I'm not saying he's going to make you feel good. I'm just going to say this to you. Yeah, well, especially after just what he got to telling him about eating his yeah. body and yeah. drinking yeah. his blood. <laughs> yeah, and one of you guys is a devil. He's supposed to do that. <laughs> Oh man, too much. Any other comments on this last little section we had there? The one thing, I mean, it goes further on the Bible, but when he says he spoke of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, the one he called he was the devil. But Jesus is, even though that he was going to betray him, his extension of, of of love to him and to always want him to be close and to come see I I'm I'm still here. I know you you're gonna do these things, I know this is what, what your future is gonna be, but I'm still ha have open arms to you. Yeah, because he tells them whoever the father has given me, I'm not gonna lose any one of you. Yeah. Yeah. Except with the exception of yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. And that was so the scripture would be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it was going to be his personal choice, and God gives us our personal choices if we choose to do that. Um, but the fact that, you know, knowing all this time, and who knows what all Judas did throughout the ministry? Well, you know, he was he pilfered from the, oh, yeah. from the purse, mm -hmm. you know, and grumbled about the women given. A year's worth of wages on the perfume for you know he said we could have sold that you know 
because he was even even says that he was t stealing <clears throat> from the yeah purse. I think is the word they used. Yeah, that is so. You know, for those who wonder about Christ and His love, is that until the very end. He's, his arms are open for you. He's, he's yeah. willing to accept you till the very end, till you decide when there's no more breath in your life. Um, but he's willing to accept you as you are, where you are, up until the last breath. week. The uh, yeah. last the, he was he, he was with him the three years the yeah. whole time, and and Jesus knew all that time, mm -hmm. you know, who it was because we're still early in the Gospel of John. Still got a long ways to go, so mm -hmm. I mean, this is early on in the ministry. That is that is so you know, for those who may not understand how much God loves us. That you no, know, knowing how bad we are, know what we're gonna do in the future. He goes, yeah, I know, I know all about you. But I love you. I can't love you any more than I love you now. I, my love is maxed, and it's unending. Well, and, and when he said on the Sermon on the Mount to love your enemy. Mm -hmm. Jesus lived it out in yeah. loving Judas. Mm -hmm. You know, the, took him as one of his own. The whole, even though he knew from the very beginning who it was that was going to betray him, still loved them. You know, the whole treated them like their other disciples. Yeah, exactly. We never see where he treated Ju Judas any different. No, never. Yeah, didn't treat him different. Did never bag them. Never gave any hint that he was the one. The disciples, even the Last Supper, they're like, "Who's he talking about?" They had no clue. But he knew early on, because like I said, we are so early, and he said, "One of one of you." Yeah. What what, what the word the word he, the one of you is a, yeah is a devil. Let's see, did I choose one of you is a devil? Yeah. <laughs> What's the? Is the oh, there's no note on that here. I'm not sure what it maybe does he mean. Was that is that the word for demon or just the evil person? I'm not sure, but. And it makes me wonder: Did did Judas actually believe? You know, was he? Did he believe in who Jesus was? I mean, later he you know commits suicide. Yeah, but he was and, sorry though. He was sorry, but not. But it's yeah. like it's like worldly sorry. Like Paul talks about in Corinthians, there's worldly sorry and godly <laughs> godly sorrow. Judas had worldly sorrow. I mean, was he a secular person who was? doing this as kind of a double life and trying to worm his way into a you know an influential person and and taking advantage of an influential person or was he hoping that jesus was someone else in a sense that he was that, that he was going to be maybe jesus right hand man when he you know kicks over the roman empire or something or or was he deceived about who jesus was or did he not believe and he what? was just deceiving everyone about himself. You know, he wasn't. I don't remember. Actually, wasn't a believer. Was Was Judas one of the ones that he were called zealots, or was that another? Was that the other Simon who was? I can't remember if it was Judas was a zealot. He was one of the ones that was for sure thinking he was going to come as a political leader. You know, as a king, he would have been with the crowd. You know. I don't remember if that was Judas or was, the mm -hmm. other Simon. There's another Simon in there too. <laughs> I don't remember now. And there was that. the Judas, not Iscariot. That it was the well, other. That, Judas, that was yeah. Jesus's brother. Jesus had a brother named Judas. And he was he was definitely you know he threw the the thirty pieces of silver at the leader's feet and and uh, you know ran out and was distraught and you know maybe it was. His guilt, the huh? guilt, or whatever, but it, I, it makes me wonder if he, if he really realized who Jesus was, or if that. But I mean, it's, it's, the Bible is not clear on it. I don't think. Yeah, but he walked with him, saw everything that Jesus did. And how could a person? Yeah, you would think. How could a person not believe unless they were just deeply deceived? Yeah, and John says at the end of the book, you know, that there's not enough books that could the books could fill the world that could talk about all that jesus did so i mean he saw a lot of stuff mm -hmm. it was simon it was simon yeah okay I, simon I remember. The yeah yeah I, I i i didn't remember if it was jesus or or simon 
Because we have Simon Peter, and that's just Simon, the mm -hmm. other one, yeah. Okay, so two weeks from today, we'll go after chapter uh, seven. seven. Start at chapter seven, which will be episode 11. Today is episode 10 that will be on YouTube. And uh, we skipped nine because we didn't get a recording of it. So I'm, not, I'm just going to leave that as nine and not number this one as nine. We'll call it ten. Which means two and a half months now we've been here. All right, two more. Yeah, I know. All right, gentlemen. Enjoy the enjoy the rest of your week. Have a blessed one, and uh, we'll see you. Two weeks from today. All right. Well, we'll see you on see you on Sunday, but <laughs> as far as this goes.